Bien Do 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 do. Bien yen. Do 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 do. Bien yen. Do 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 do. Hello and welcome back to Big Nostalgia, the podcast where we talk about the old games which we're either nostalgic for or not so much nostalgic for in some cases. What will it be today? I am Hado Inc. And I am Vixter. And the game this week is Donkey Kong 64. So, yes. Yes. We own this game. We love this, well, do we love this game? I've never completed this game. There's a lot of games in this series that um, I have definitely 100%ed completed. Yeah. Some not until I was an adult and some when I was a kid. This one, no. no. I don't think either of us have ever completed it. No, and we'll get into some of the reasons why today on Big Nostalgia. Woo woo. So, this game obviously came off the back. So, once upon a time when Nintendo owned 49% of Rare, so Rare were basically only making games for Nintendo. Yep. They made... No, oh, they were given the reins to the Donkey Kong series. And then they made Donkey Kong Country for the SNES, which was a massive seller. And so then they went on to make Donkey Kong Country 2 and Donkey Kong Country 3. These were all SNES games. In around 1997, when the development of Donkey Kong Country 3 was wrapping up, they started putting their eyes towards the Nintendo 64. Um, and in the original uh, proposal document, because some facts about this game have been shared since, in like, the years since, apparently its original name was pitched in its first pitch as Donkey Kong World. Oh. Which obviously follows on from Donkey Kong Country. Yeah. And then as time went on, it just became Donkey Kong 64, as obviously that seemed to be quite a convention. Well, let's be honest, you had Star Fox... Six... Was Star Fox 64? Uh, in the US. Yeah. And it, here and it was Lilac Wars. Of course, you had Super Mario 64, which was the most traditional one. And Mario Kart 64. It just, it just seemed to be a, f- a phase with... Um, consoles on the 64 to be named after the 64 because it was coming out on the 64 64 64 well the thing is all the a lot of um super nintendo games just had super yeah and a lot of games since then have done similar like ds and you wii u yeah so it's not unusual um i suppose it really hits home on which console it's coming out on yeah i was gonna say if it's an exclusive yeah. Then you're making sure it's an exclusive. I'm not sure how you'd fit Switch into a lot of titles for <laughs> nowadays. Swish. <laughs> Swish. <laughs> that just sounds un- awkward. <laughs> <laughs> Unawkward. Uh, that means it's going to work, people. Wait. So the game was released in November 22nd, 1999 in the US and in December 1999 worldwide. Mm-hmm. So actually to harken back to something from last week, uh, Mario Party 2, that was released in Japan in December 1999. And not until and millennials until... And that was because Nintendo were betting a lot of money on Donkey Kong 64. So Mario Party 2, Perfect Dark and Pokemon Stadium were all, all slated, back? were all pushed back to 2000 to give Donkey Kong basically... The it was the holiday game of Christmas 1999 the last main holiday game game from Nintendo in that century. Put so, a lot of yeah. stint on it. Well that's the thing and they expect they were basically uh well we'll get into Well no we're talking about background. Basically they put a lot of stock into this game. It had apparently had around double the marketing budget of comparable size games. Did it have more or less than Super Mario or was that a bad comparison? Because that game came out as a game that to was go a, the I was going to say that was a launch title so I'm yeah. not sure if that would be you'd be able to make a what about Legend of Zelda correct comparison well apparently I'm not sure if this was for the US territories but they expected it in its first year to get 1.5 million more than Zelda wow because of the success on the um, SNES oh. wow and because obviously Donkey Kong was one of their big flagship properties and they're putting all this money behind the marketing yeah so it didn't quite do that well no, um, it did very respectably. It is the seventh most, seventh best selling game on the N sixty four, and the second highest of rares. So that is pretty good. Mm. 
in the overall kind of view but I did hear that there was a lot of backlash there wasn't a lot of um, fans for this version of the Donkey Kong franchise so on release it had a lot of um, it was highly praised it's just been in recent years it's just been criticised that it may not have held up as well so when people have gone back to the series and it doesn't help that it's the only 3D Donkey Kong game no so they did Donkey Kong Country 1 to 3 Donkey Kong 64 and there's they were two all like 2D. so Donkey Kong Country 1 to 3 were 2D Donkey Kong 64 3D then it had some weird like rhythm games like Donkey Konga for the GameCube <laughs> things kind of went a bit itself yeah and then obviously Donkey Kong Country Returns which was back to 2D and Tropical Freeze also 2D well, so it gets seen as slightly, I think from that context, a bit of a black sheep, but there is more to it than that. Well, I suppose Donkey Kong was mainly a... Well, let's be honest, Nintendo was mainly a 2D concept until the Nintendo 64. The Nintendo 64 brought a lot of things to Nintendo, which it couldn't do before, which is a whole thing that we've mentioned about Le uh, Legend of Zelda, and uh, we will be mentioning, I suppose, at some point about Super Mario. So, but, um, yeah. And I'd say the graphics in Donkey Kong uh, 64 is no different than the graphics in either of those two games. Mm. But I think potentially that the camera angles and stuff like that were the letdown. Because of course, as we mentioned in the Zelda one, if you haven't listened to it, you need to. They actually bought a new Z targeting range to help with the camera angles. Whereas this one didn't have anything like that. So that's part of it. Because one of the... So I'll start by saying that this game was built on the... Banjo Kazooie engine, which is kind of obvious because it rare wouldn't have made a completely new engine for a three D collector phone if they already had one. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, but interestingly, this game was bundled with the expansion pack. So to let you know how far technology has come, the Nintendo sixty four had four megabytes of RAM, and the expansion pack added another four megabytes of RAM. The computer we are recording this on. It's probably about eight gigabytes of RAM. <laughs> so yeah. it was a big difference. But the reason they bundled it with is because there was a bug with Donkey Kong 64 that was nothing to do supposedly with the, the RAM difference, but was fixed by the expansion pack. Mm. So it caused a huge hit to their profits because they bundled in an expansion pack with every version of the every copy of the game so that people would be able to play it properly. Yeah. And that was meant to also have an effect on giving it better textures and more high quality sound, but people reported that they didn't really. Did Legend of Zelda come much. out before this game or after this game? It before. came out before? Yeah. Well, it just kind of baffles me a little bit that two games that come out before, as in the Super Mario 64 and The Legend of Zelda, have certain problems to this one, yet they came out before and they obviously dealt with it. Hmm. So this came out a year after Banjo Kazooie? But before Banjo Tui. But if you'd had these successful games coming out, why didn't they put the stuff that they put towards those games towards this game to help sort out those bugs? Possibly they didn't have a good amount of um, knowledge yeah. sharing across the wider Research. Nintendo. Yeah. Because I was going to say Nintendo of Japan probably weren't didn't share too much of their secrets with anyone. <laughs> um. But I think one of the things as well is that this game, compared to other games, because it's trying so much to be big and there are five different characters which I'll get on to in the next section, it became a bit of a mess of collectibles. So I've got, I made a list of all the items. I went on the Mario Wiki, which is obviously a great place to get information. <laughs> but the items in this game, you had the golden bananas, regular bananas, banana coins, you got a banana medal if you got 75 bananas in a level, the boss keys, the melons which were the life, oranges which were the grenades, headphones which refilled your magic, uh, your music meter, supply crates of both regular bullets and homing bullets, crystal coconuts which was your special abilities as each Kong had, camera film for the camera, the rareware coin which you got from completing the game, the arcade game Jetpack which was included in its entirety within the game. The Nintendo coin from beating the Donkey Kong arcade game twice. Blueprints, which you gave to a character and got a golden banana in return. 
And battle arena crowns, which you got from doing the battle arena mini games. So if you count the crates, normal bullets and other bullets as two separate ones, that's sixteen items that yeah. you can collect. And in, obviously in some of those in comparison to other games. Obviously some of those were like ammo and stuff like that, so they would de deplete, but you compare that to Mario sixty four where it was uh, coins and stars. That was it, wasn't it? I mean if you wanna be pedantic Coins, red coins, blue coins, stars. But that's still under five. That's yeah. like four. Yeah. Vicky can count. And I think part of that was it was almost like the saturation point of the 3D collector farm because it got to the point of the levels were too big and too much. And the stuff to collect in it was just too varied. It was very hard to find something specific. Yes. Um, <clears throat> ukulele <clears throat> <laughs> oh, we still haven't learnt really have we yeah what no I, th I think when they made ukulele they took too much inspiration from Donkey Kong and didn't learn any of the lessons from it I think but they were just that, trying to be not Banjo-Kazooie that might have to be a future episode yes because we do need to discuss that hmm the problem with the bigger levels as well, as we said, it's harder to find items and I just remember when I played through them, just getting lost, like, on my motive, on my direction, and also, find everything. And also, if you found items that were for a different character, you then had to go find one of those switch boxes and then and come back. to the character, then come back. And it's not just like Banjo-Kazooie with two characters, I mean, you've got five, hmm. all with their special abilities, all with their different bits and bobs and didn't have to unlock them as well yeah so you rescued them as you went through the the worlds yeah so in a way at least it kind of slowly increased the number because it went donkey kong and then the first world was diddy and then yeah it expanded and i think chunky was last chunky yeah um but what was the general storyline of the donkey kong story so let's talk plot plot thickens <laughs> Yes, I so, went there. on DK Island, where Donkey Kong lives. In As the, he does. In an island the shape of his own head. In a hut only big enough for one. Yeah, he fit five family members in there with him. Unless they live somewhere else, but there's never any other houses. Anyway, Donkey Kong, I think he's, well, he's like chilling at home. I think we're seeing holes in the story so far. He's chilling at home. Waxing um, all cool. Then a couple of crocs, who are up to no good, start, start making, making trouble, trouble in, in his, his neighbourhood. Go on one little fight and his mm. uncle, uncle got, got scared. scared. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I'm going to teach you all these new moves so you're prepared. <laughs> I'm prepared. That's what this song is. <laughs> We're rocking this. Uh, anyway, then King K. Rool, uh back for his, this is his fourth, of, at least fourth appearance. Big bad, basically bows in croc form. I was gonna say he should be a lot more well known now, considering he's just in been in the Smash. Yeah, he's just been bought into Smash Bros. after a few years of being not in very much. But then again, King DDD from the Kirby franchise, the, he was kind of the next logical big bad to bring in. What another king? Another king. These kings are. Oh, they should do a battle royale for the kings. A royal rumble. Ah. ah. Anyway. Anyway. Um, he came up in his mechanical fortress of the Crocodile Isle, As which was a giant blastomatic gun in its head. Yep. And was basically just going to blow up the island. As as you do when you're evil. But as I think it's just the gun needs to warm up or something like that, as is the case with rare games. <laughs> Banjo Tui. Mm -hmm. They were like, oh, we've kidnapped some of these Kongs as well. And he basically just sits in his... It's like a Saturday morning cartoon. The big bad sits in his chair going, nah, I'll send my latest thing to destroy the Kongs. And they always have like swivel chairs like in uh, Danger Mouse. So mm. you can sit there with a, a creature of some kind or just swivel around and be like, Mah. And throughout the story, they'd cut back to having little skits in the King K rules. And it takes forever for this gun to load up, by the way. Like, ages. Which mm. is great for our hero. But, uh, and then Donkey Kong's like, dude, that's my homies. Well, let's go. Yeah, so he goes and he goes to the first world, which was Jungle Japes, where he saves Diddy Kong. And then after defeating the boss there, which was 
I want to say that's the armadillo with the guns. I think his name is Armadillo. Because <laughs> this was rare. <laughs> well, the thing is, well, the beaver enemies were called Naughties. So G N A W T Y. Yeah. So they they were Red big of their fans. Puns. Of the, yeah. I was gonna say it's pro like pun city. Yeah. Um, and then after defeating each boss, you got a key, and you went to K Lumsey, which was like King K Rule's like nephew or something that they couldn't trust, so they locked him up. And every time you got one of the locks off his gate, he was so happy he did a little dance, and that would open up a new area of the island because he was causing earthquakes basically. <laughs> and so. The eight levels were Jungle Japes, Angry Aztec, if you remember, it had the um, temples you could go into. Yep. Frantic Factory. I don't think I got much further than the Aztec. To be honest, beyond Frantic Factory, I don't remember it too well. So there's Gloomy Galleon. Okay. A Fungi Forest, which I remember bits of, which is weird, so it makes me think I was playing it in the wrong order. Crystal Caves, Creepy Castle, and then Hideout Helm. So actually, Hideout Helm was like the final world of the boss, the final boss, but it was still a full level. So it still had, can you believe, 75 golden bananas for each wow. level. Because each, no wait, no, it was 25, because each Kong had five. Yeah, I was thinking 75 is quite a lot. <laughs> yeah, no, it's not, Mar it's not Mario Odyssey. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, 25 in each level. So that was what, 200, 25 times eight. Um, Fungi Forest, interesting fact, that was a level that was meant to be in Banjo-Kazooie, but was cut due to time constraints, so they huh. reused it. Fair enough. So actually, in Banjo's house on the wall, there's a picture of him in the forest, that is Fungi Forest, and that is a takeaway from the development, but it's used as a picture on Banjo's wall, and then it, the, get, the level was used reworked for, for Donkey Kong 64. Yeah. Um, so yeah, let's go over the colourful cast of characters who are out to stop King K. Rule. Well, if we really want to do the characters properly, shouldn't we sing the rap? So, we're not going to sing the rap in its entirety. <laughs> <laughs> but the rap at the beginning of the game was, a, I still think it's a great way of introducing all the characters. It was... But once you've listened to, for it once, you don't really need to listen for it. At all else. times in the game's history, it's basically been Marmite. People have either loved it or hated it. Yeah. DK. Donkey. So it was written by a guy called Andrea, uh, something Andreas who worked for Rare, and then Grant Kirkhope recorded it and they mixed it. And Grant thought, Kirk this was a good idea. Yeah. So Grant Kirkhope did the compositions for the game as well as he did Banjo Kazooie, Banjo Tooie, Goldeneye, a lot of the Rare games of that era. Um. And yeah, that was a great introduction to the five main characters. Because to be honest, some of them it was our first Donkey Kong game. Yeah, and I suppose technically, like Banjo, Kaz Banjo Kazooie had a song introducing their game. The only difference was it didn't have any words to it, and it was a lot more homely. Whereas this one was hmm. down with the kids with the rap rap. Yeah, and that again <laughs> Which goes is to questionable with Marmite. It's going to say it goes again to show where Ukulele got its inspiration because it did a a rap rather than a yeah instrumental. which again Marmite yeah. so main character obviously owner of the game he's the leader of the bunch uh, and you know his name wait you know him well damn it I already got him wrong <laughs> this is why we did not sing <laughs> um, Donkey Kong he's the finally dude. back to kick some tail is did that what you you're trying to do you know him well yeah well tail Donkey Kong, main character, not the strongest, but overall one of those well-rounded characters really. Hmm. Standard sort of exploring, jump in sort of thing, whereas uh, some of the others go have very specific sort of traits. Yes, and then Diddy Kong who... Who obviously has the jetpack, which people know from the Super Smash. And his coconut uh, and his peanut guns. Peanut guns. Whereas Donkey Kong had the coconut, gun. coconut guns. Interesting uncle. point from its development, though, is that uh, old screenshots show that as being a double-barrel shotgun that DK had, 
Mm. And Diddy had two pistols, like metal, <laughs> proper guns. Oh, okay. And they had to dumb it, like change it for kids. So I'm not sure if it's changed for kids or whether it just, to be honest, it didn't really fit the theme anyway. No. But when we get into one of the other characters, it explains why he basically runs an ammunition dealership. <laughs> so and then they're like, no, only for peanuts. <laughs> yeah. So there was Diddy Kong, who had the jetpack, the guns. I, I did find it funny guitar. though. Uh, Diddy Kong is supposed to be the nephew of Donkey Kong. Yeah. So of course his great nephew, because there is an uncle in this. Yeah. So. Because Donkey Kong's uncle's in this as well. So that would be his great nephew. Yeah, because yeah. I'm pretty sure Cranky is the uncle, or he's the grandfather, I can't actually remember. But then, isn't the girl supposed to be his sister? No, because that was a different Kong from the Donkey Kong Country games. So there was a Kong called Dixie Kong that was in the Donkey Kong Country games with Diddy and had similar... Actually, I don't think that was his sister either. The Kong family are just... I don't, I don't incestuous un- going on here. I don't understand their family tree. I'm but anyway, so we had Diddy Kong. Considering had... the next character was Lanky Kong, who wasn't even a gorilla, he was a orangutan. Wasn't he the uncle though? Let's not stop trying to guess the family <laughs> tree. No, wasn't there a really old one who wasn't That's a playable cr- cranky? Cranky. He was the uncle. He's either the uncle or the granddad. You know those Facebooks when you can ma- literally make anyone your sister, auntie, uncle, child? It's a bit like that for Donkey Kong. Oh. <laughs> anyway, Lanky Kong was the orangutan. With the stretchy arms. I don't even know how he fits. He must be married into the family, being an orangutan. He, <laughs> yeah. Probably. That was sad. Yeah. Uh, what is it? Dixie Kong? the girl tiny Kong tiny Kong which given her name can shrink down into tiny sizes didn't she have the hair that flew yeah so she could like propel her through the air which is pretty cool aspect which spy kids decide to steal later and so did Luigi because he could do the like propeller jump weird he's always wanted pigtails that's Luigi with his arms. No, he does it with. She does it with her hair, though. No, I know she does it with her hair. He does it with <laughs> his arms. He should have done it with his hair. He's letting the side down, and then um, the big one, Chunky Kong. Chunky Kong. Because he was a big one. Obviously, his main power was strength. Yeah, although he's portrayed as a bit of a wuss. Um, and then yeah, he could also have had the ability to turn invisible as well. Did he? Yeah, that was like one of his spec because each of them like. I don't think I ever got to that character. No, he's quite well. He was like, later on the fourth, last one. To yeah, collect. fourth or fifth level. I like Cranky Kong. So Cranky Kong is with the, the first like the assist- arms. Lanky no, Kong. Lanky Kong with the arms, the orangutan. He was pretty funny, and he used to do the whole running thing with his arms. Hmm. Like you. Like and he used to inflate himself a- just like a balloon. Yes, he did. Hmm. Um. So those are your playable characters. Each one has you like had different abilities. Because Lanky jumps, shooting, arms, strength, invisibility. Yeah. Lanky Kong basically had his own version of Kazooie's talent truck because he could walk on up up steep slopes on his hands. Yes, he did. Not sure why you wouldn't slip, but he didn't. He didn't, which was the main point. Um, and then your NPCs were Cranky Kong, previously alluded to, who's actually the Donkey Kong from the arcade game. So technically he's like Donkey Kong Senior, but he gets referred to as Cranky Kong. Which I always thought he was the uncle, so... Yeah, weird family. Yeah. Wasn't there a girl, like a grown-up girl as well, that was... So that was Candy Kong. Which was Donkey Kong's unofficial, like, missus, lover, prostitute... Again, we're not, we're not <laughs> trying to guess it. We also... I obviously am. <laughs> Join us next week for Who Do You Think You Are, Donkey Kong, with Vic Star taking him through his history. <laughs> um, uh, no, Candy Kong. So, Cranky did new abilities through potions. And you had to trade banana coins to him. Mm-hmm. Uh, Candy Kong was the musical instruments and increasing yeah. your maximum hearts. Or because melons. I did like that aspect of the game that each character had a different musical instrument, didn't they? Yeah. So, of course, Donkey Kong had the drums. Yes. Diddy Kong had the guitar. Uh, Tiny had the saxophone. 
Lanky Kong had the trombone. Exactly. Yep. And I'm sound effects person, obviously. Chunky Kong, I'm pretty sure. Oh, he had the triangle. Oh my goodness, he <laughs> did, didn't he? I think the whole irony, him being a worse triangle. Yeah. Um, and then you had Funky Kong, who. It seems in he this had the game glasses, only. Didn't he? he was he was a cool dude. That's the thing. This is almost something yeah. left over from when they had real guns because he had a bloody ammunition dealership with like guns and bombs that around. He's like, give you some good weapons. And then it was like peanuts. <laughs> it was like, and this shoots peanuts at people. If they've got an allergy, they'll be in trouble. <laughs> really mess up those crocodiles with those peanut allergies. What what what? <laughs> <laughs> I know. I so, know. yeah, that was... Probably that was probably the uncle. Yeah, I'm just... Yeah, let's not try and work out. But those are all the characters. And there was a nice array of characters. I just personally feel there was too many. Like, my favourite... Obviously, Banjo-Kazooie. There might be a hint due to other channels. That's one of my favourite Nintendo 64 games. Hmm. But it was quite a simple concept. You had two characters... And then, of course, when we go into the Banjo Tooie, you've got three playable characters if you count Mumbo. I mean, you still had a large supporting cast, but yeah, they yeah. were like but almost they... helped by the fact they weren't all monkeys. And they also helped in the fact that they had special abilities, but they were more like background cast, so a B mm. cast. Whereas the main cast, the playable cast, was quite small. Mm. So you could really focus on building up their special abilities. Whereas I think with this, having five characters with such defined different skill set mm. and having to wait for them to be unlocked and all that kind of stuff didn't work. It along very, with the variety. It's a great variety of it's very items. Very ambitious. Very ambitious. A great variety of characters. I just think maybe it was ahead of its time. Because all the characters, like for example Smash, with all the varieties of characters, it was a lot simpler scene. Hmm. Because of course they were literally just fighting. Yeah. And they've been able to develop their characters and develop yeah. when technology develops. Whereas this, having all those characters on a such an immersive world as well, I think these are some of the aspects that worked against it. But it was very ambitious. So I'm still actually going through the list of characters. Is there more characters? So there was Snide. Who's Snide? He was the weasel that you gave the blueprints to. And then he uh, had those uh, machines that would do different random stuff. I didn't realise there was more than just the monkeys. So he was like the only non-monkey, but he was like, he betrayed King K. Rool and was, wanted to help. But he wouldn't Something do Something about it. weasels. Something like that. But I liked his machines though each time. But Zootopia teaches us not to assume by the outside of the character. Exactly. But we do. What else was that? There was Rink Wrinkly Kong. That was the ghost. I don't remember that one. So that was at the uh, outside of each world, those five doors. And Wrinkly would come out and give a hint to get find one of the golden bananas in the world. To if you went up as that coloured door as the right Kong. So she used to be a living character, but died somewhere between the last game and that game which was pretty pretty sad mm. um, and then there was do you remember Toff and Scruff do you remember the bonus level no, where you could Scruff. unlock his graveyard no joking but that would have been a very morbid idea anyway Toff and Scruff <laughs> I'm sad now <laughs> Toff and Scruff Tough and scoff. So is the I want to say more monkeys. No, it's the pig, and I want to say the hippo. Scoff. Scoff would be the pig. And remember, is the boss door is the key was already in the door, but you had to feed bananas to the. I think it was the <gasps> oh, pig. Oh yeah, to make and him... then that made the other one go up because it was on like a like. Promoting childhood obesity, obviously, with bananas though. Hmm. Eating banana, two bananas a day, really helps your metabolism. I was going to say, that guy would have been full of energy by the end of it. <laughs> Although very, very fat, apparently. Maybe it was chocolate bananas. 
Well, some of them were like blue, some of them were like green, so. Who knows? Hmm. He was eating them whole as well, so who knows what banana skin. With skin and all. Who knows what skin does to you? Any more characters? That's all the ones we've got written down, but they were probably, like, obviously the enemies had names. But again. Bosses had names. Yeah. But again, it's just. I, f I feel the main problem with this game is there was just too much of everything before yeah. the technology could really support it. Well, that's the idea, though. And also, at times, it became a bit of a maze as to getting different people to do different things. So maybe it would have been better if any Kong could have collected any bananas. Yeah. And then it was just these basic objectives you would have to switch around. Because well, otherwise, you more... had to retread seat places multiple times to get everything. Or more specific. Um banana um, activities that just sounds wrong um, more Pacific um, rounds and stuff like that for Pacific Kongs mm. later on in the levels like yeah not so prominent but um, we need to talk about the design so the design is one of the things that Before people say I go age worse about the game which I already have sorry oops so People say the design is one of the things that's not aged well. Like the, the actual physical design of the levels. Would you argue that none of the 3D uh, Nintendo 64 games have aged well? Are we saying in level design or actual looks? I'm saying in level design. So I would disagree. I'd say that um, Mario 64 and Banjo Kazooie, because of its smaller levels, has aged better because they're not mazes now when you go back they're still pretty obvious as to what you need to do mm -hmm. whereas Banjo to uh, kind of off put this a bit with warp pads but at the same time that had a lot of backtracking through old levels and new levels but and it didn't matter because of the warp pads yeah well it was easier because of the warp pads something that I feel is Although lacking DK... in the ukulele yeah and DK64 had warp pads as well because remember the bananas would eat them up <laughs> yeah um but at the same time, like, those were just very big, very... I think it was mostly the changing, continual changings of characters and just the pure number of collectibles that made it a bit unbearable. Mm. But I like that this, it was a very standard design of levels at those times. Mm. Like, let's be honest, doesn't matter what game you're talking about, there's sure to be a forest level, there's sure to be a water level, there's sure to be a fire level, there's sure to be a desert level, there's sure to be like a spooky level. Hmm. Those are your normal kind of standard. Yeah, no, the thing is, I do, I do hub, still, didn't it? I will say, I do really still like this game. We're mostly criticising it because, well, you know. It's That's what we do. Yeah. We, we critique. Um, See, I, the, w I would say that I don't really enjoy this game, but maybe it's because I haven't played it since that age. Hmm. I actually haven't played it since I was a kid. It's not a game that I felt the need to replay, whereas quite a lot of them, like last week when we were talking about uh, Mario Party, first thing I wanted to do since uh, finishing that, I was like, I want to go and play Mario Party. <laughs> <laughs> whereas I'm not getting the same feel out of this game. No, that's the thing, it's just so big that like, I think I'd had a go at replaying it a few years ago and I just, I got to a certain point and I just lost my steam with it because it's just so big. Mm. Like you can beat the Banjo games in like a f 10 hours at most. Yeah. But the audio is great because it was Grant oh. Kirkhope and the, his soundtracks are always... And I love the aspects, like I love the idea this game had with the music and the bananas and the collectibles it really had some great ideas I just think someone needed to go into that room and say right take half of that away and it would have been better putting more energy into the half amount than trying to put all your energy into all of it yeah or just somebody to be like yes they needed someone to just slap their hands a bit maybe yeah no you can't have all of it because sometimes less is more I'm a great stand over that Hmm. Less is more because you get very well. It's like the uh, fine-tuned stuff. Like the perfect example of that is always the first Portal game, which I'm sure we'll cover at some point. Oh my goodness, I love that game. But the whole joy of that game is it wasn't supposed to be such a explosion. You literally had a very small team on it, a very small funding. It was supposed to be a filler game, hmm. and it did better than the main game in some people's respect. 
and um, sometimes I think it is better to go smaller to go that's why I like um, steam so much because small developers and stuff do have this um, chance to really get their games out hmm. it doesn't guarantee that it's a good game it just gives more people an opportunity to get their yeah. point of view out there so which I think sometimes get lost in bigger media so one of the interesting things about this game is a collectible was found for it for the first time last year for the first what? time they found what? it was one of the <laughs> rainbow what? one of the rainbow banana coins they just had been hidden like the thing for it because you had to ground pound that DK square it'd been under long grass and just not unnoticed like it wasn't even out of bounds or anything like that it was perfectly accessible so if you had searched on YouTube it wouldn't have come up until last year yeah someone just found it because they were looking through like the, the data for the game and realised that they hadn't got everything for that area that's crazy and it wasn't even like out last of... year so that's what and it invalidated all the 17 years so it's been... gone undiscovered so all the speed runs that had been done for collecting all the items were made invalid <laughs> and had to be done again with this extra <laughs> stuff <laughs> so it's nuts that something could stay hidden in a game for so many years when it wasn't properly hidden it was just no one had found you yeah know, no one had bothered walking in that pitch of grass no one had for 17 years well it was more just no one had I guess ground pounded because you don't just get it from walking you have to pound the ground oh okay but it was under long grass so you couldn't see the square on the floor <laughs> that's funny yeah that's a good piece of use of information hmm so yeah that was and so what do you generally think you like the game generally I think it's ambitious but I if like it, sh it was definitely too much I like the idea of the game. Yeah. But I can't like the game because I've never completed it. I feel that it's very hard to like a game if you find it difficult to complete it. So there's, yeah, there's different things you can do, really. You can, because obviously, if you make it so each con can do each objective, then that makes them, takes away, I guess, the the build up like collecting the cons and also think, oh, yeah the specialness of each character why bother changing if your con can do everything in Mario Galaxy 2 you reach a point when you can just play as Luigi but as a re and Luigi is a he can jump higher but he's got less traction so he's not a big change therefore he can still do everything but obviously these are a lot more distinct mm. but I think possibly they just need to have more common items because each of them having their own bananas, their own banana coins, their own this, that and the other, possibly was too much. Yeah. Maybe they just should have had their own golden bananas, like their own five objectives. So for the wider level, you could have literally been anyone. You could have collected all the bananas and then specifically gone for that banana for that person, that banana for that yeah. person. Yes, well, the, the golden bananas, you could have had the specific objectives where you needed to be the other characters. I definitely think the amount of items is a problem with the mm. game as well. They needed, what we said earlier, they basically needed someone in that office to say, like, the characters, the items, the size of the world, possibly, but that might have been solved with the other two issues. But definitely the characters and the items halve them. So if you could, what, there's six Kongs? Which three Kongs would you want to keep? Hmm. Oh, okay, so what, if we were taking away two? It's only five? Yeah. So if you're taking away two, who would you want to keep and why? So you obviously have to keep Donkey Kong. Because <laughs> it's his name. It's a bit like taking Mario away from Super Mario. So I would get rid of Chunky first, because technically Donkey Kong could be the strong one. Yep. Um. And then you probably don't need Diddy and Tiny. So or, possibly get rid of the need to be tiny and get rid of. So or I'd end up with. Or have Diddy having Tiny's ability. Well, like shrink. Yeah. Yeah. Because cause then you could have the strong one being Donkey, hmm. the little one being able to shrink and fly, and then Lanky being the long one. Yeah. And that's a lot more defined a lot more balanced out but some people would argue that you need a generic girl character so to play. but that was before every game literally had you choosing a male or a female and it's basically the same character but with 
a bit more de defined chest and long hair. And also, if you were looking for that, you could just make Diddy Dixie Kong, because Dixie Kong was from the Donkey Kong Country series, had the same dimensions as Diddy, basically, and could have very easily just filled his place. Yeah, so you didn't even need a Tiny Kong in type at all, really. Yeah, you could have got rid of both Tiny and Diddy and just had Dixie and Lanky. Which is a co com combination of the two. Yeah, they basically did a fusion hack and fused. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've been very fair in our, uh, our assessment of this game. Do you agree at home? Please leave in the comments telling us whether we've been wrong about Donkey Kong 64, what whether you we like. need to revisit it, what you like, what you don't like. Yep. Um, follow us on at AbridgedBK on Twitter for updates about this series. If you haven't already, we've had four episodes of this series out before this one. So there's Smash Bros, Ocarina of Time, Snowboard Kids and Mario Party 2 check those out if you want to hear us talk about those. Next week the game is taking a bit of a turn from first and second party games and we will be talking about Bugs Life 64. That should be an interesting revisit. It should be because yeah it's just a game I haven't revisited in such a long time and being a third party but I'm definitely looking forward to it because I do remember enjoying playing. Yeah. Because we wanted to do a mix of the the hits and the slightly more obscure. Yeah, so not just game, like, favourites. Cover the entire base of the Nintendo 64 franchise. Platform. Platform. So anyway, <laughs> join us next week for another new episode of Big Nostalgia. I've been Haddowink. And I've been Vickster. See you next time. Have a good week. Bye. Be in the end. Do, 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 do. Be in the end. Do, 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 do. Be in the end. Do 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 do